So we went through all the trouble of modeling a tank, of rigging it and animating and setting everything up, but what's the point of doing all this if you're not going to put the tank into action? So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to animate our tank so it can fire a projectile at a target and destroy the target. Alright, so over here we've got our starting setup, and all this is is a big green plane, and over here we've got our tank, and in the back here we have a stack of cubes with rigid bodies on them so that when we hit them with a projectile, the cubes are going to fly all over the place and we're hopefully going to destroy our target. Now I have a tank track rig set up right here so that when I play my animation, the tank is going to slowly start moving forward. If you want to learn how to do this, I have two separate tutorials where I show you guys how to rig tank tracks. One of them is using constraints and the other one is using physics, so the other one also has suspensions included, so you can make your tank go over some bumps, and I think that's really useful if you want to make any kind of animation. So be sure to check those out. Now what we're going to do here, is we're going to let our tank move forward a little bit, and we're just going to wait until like frame 50 or so, and that's where we're going to make our turret turn and go and aim for this target right there. So on frame 50, we're going to set a keyframe, we're going to lock in the rotation, and then about 20 or 30 frames later, we're going to rotate the, the turret around its own axis, around the Z axis, by about 45 degrees, and we're going to lock in the rotation once again right there, okay? So now if we play our animation, the tank is going to slowly move forward, and then at this point it's going to aim for the target right there, okay? Don't worry if this is a bit laggy, it's just Blender buffering the animation. And then once we do that, we want to make our tank actually fire the projectile. So first of all, we have to create the projectile, okay? So let's go over here, let's focus at the end of our barrel, and we're going to place our 3D cursor right there, and we're going to create a sphere. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to make the sphere kind of point in the same direction as the barrel, okay? So we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees in object mode, we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees around the y-axis, and then by 45 degrees around the z-axis, or in my case by minus 45 degrees, and that way if we move the sphere along its own z-axis it's going to be moving in the direction as it should if it was fired from the barrel, okay? So now we're just going to scale this down a little bit. Let's scale it down so it kind of fits inside the barrel right there, okay? And then we're going to set our first keyframe for the sphere right there, okay? So we're just going to press I, and we're going to set the location, rotation, and the scale right there. Now after this, we want to just move one frame back. So for me, this is going to be frame 69. And I'm just going to scale this object all the way down to zero, and I'm going to set the location, rotation, and the scale once again. And the idea here is that the object simply does not exist up until the point where we want it to be fired. Well, technically it exists, but it's just too small to be visible. And the reason for this is because if the tank is carrying the shell until it's fired, it's going to cause some collision problems and it's going to mess with the rest of our animation. So we just want it to be out of the way until we want it to be fired. Now don't, wor don't worry if the tank snapped in a different place right now. That's again just because of the way Blender is buffering the animation. But if we play this from the start, you're going to see that it's still going to be in the right place. And now we just want to animate this object so it kind of launches in that direction, okay? So we're going to go over here about 5 frames later, and we're going to move this along the z-axis, so we're going to press G and Z two times, and we're going to move this so it's really close to the object that we want to hit right there, okay? And I think maybe there would be a better idea if we scale this object up a little bit so it doesn't go through one of these gaps. So let's just go to edit mode and let's just scale this up by just a little bit right there, okay? And then on frame 75, we're once again going to lock in the location, rotation, and the scale, okay? So now if we play the animation from the start, you see the tank slowly starts moving forward, and then it aims for the target around frame 50, and then it launches the projectile in that direction, but it stops, okay? And if you look closely, you're going to see that the movement of this object is kind of too smooth, okay? So it starts accelerating, and then it's moving really fast, and then in the end it starts slowing down. Now this doesn't make any sense because we want the projectile to be moving at a constant speed. So what we're going to do there is we're going to select one of the keyframes, we're going to press the T key on our keyboard, and we're going to set the interpolation to linear right there. And now it's going to be moving at a constant velocity. This is also really important because once we add our physics, we want this uh, object to keep the velocity that it has once it's launched, so it can continue and travel through the target right there. If it slows down in the end, it's not going to happen and it's just going to fall down to the bottom right there. Okay. So now we can actually add our rigid body to this object, okay? So we're going to select our, our physics tab right there, and we're going to add a rigid body. Now make sure the type is on active there, and you can leave all the other settings as they are. You can leave the mass on one kilogram, make sure the dynamic box is checked, and make sure your shape is on convex hull. Now depending on your object, you might want to play around with this a little bit, and you might need a slightly different collision shape, but for now let's try convex hull, and let's see if that works for us, okay? 
So now we want to go over to the first frame that we created for our sphere, and that's frame 69. And this is the frame where you don't even see the sphere yet. And we're going to check the animated box, and we're going to set the keyframe right there. And this is just going to tell Blender that at this point in time, we want to use animations on this object, so the physics are not going to work yet, okay? And because it's true, first we want to move our object here, so we build some velocity. And then after that, we're going to add in the physics so that it continues and uses that velocity and collides with the rest uh, of the object right here. So that means that we're going to go to the last frame right there, and then we're going to disable the animation and turn on the physics, okay? So let's uncheck this box right here, and let's, again, lock in the keyframe right there. And now if we go over to the start of our animation, so let's play that from the start, and it might be a little bit slow sometimes, but we can see our tank turns here, and it fires a projectile, and it goes right through the target, and the bricks are flying everywhere, and that's exactly what we wanted to achieve, okay? And now that looks pretty cool, but let's just do one more thing to make this a little bit more realistic, and that's going to be a simple recoil for the barrel. So let's zoom in on the barrel, and we know that our projectile is fired on frame 70. So on frame 70, we're going to select our barrel and we're going to set a location keyframe right there. Okay. And then we're going to move a few frames later up to like frame 77, let's say. And we're going to set another uh, location keyframe. And then at some point earlier on in this gap that we created, let's say frame 72, we're going to move this barrel backwards a little bit or along its own y axis, just so it kind of kicks back into the uh, turret of the tank and we're going to set a keyframe right there for location. And now what this should do is kind of kick the barrel back when the shot is fired, okay? So let's see if this works all the way now. Tank moves forward, at frame 50 the turret rotates, and we fire our shot, and as you can see the barrel also kind of moves backwards, and we destroyed our target right there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now guys, on my channel I have plenty of tutorials for how to model tanks, how to rig tanks, and how to animate tanks. So if you want to get better at making tanks in Blender, do check out the rest of my videos. And please consider subscribing if you want to learn more about these topics. But thanks for watching and I hope you found something helpful in this tutorial. And I hope to see you guys around.